first of all, the title is a little deceiving. What I wanted to put up there was get you this kind of idea of those are three different types of ways that we can deliver our data. You know, when we're talking about GIS especially, there's a lot of different products out there, a lot of information that we end up being swamped with. So in a lot of ways, those three words can be the same thing, but at the same time, they can be completely different. So I was saying we have a lot of different ways. We have maps, atlases, uh, interactive maps. You know, now through you can even get them on your phones. You know, one of our our coworkers developed an entire app on his phone that he now has a, an atlas on his phone that we were presenting. So with all that different type of information out there, how do you just choose exactly what it is that you're going to present and show? So the biggest piece of this is that you've got to understand who your target audience is. You know, are you simply sitting to presenting to your coworkers? Are you talking to citizens? or a student environment, are you going to be standing in front of a podium with your maps behind you? Are you going to just be talking to extremely technical people who want to know the ins and outs of every detail that you're doing? So there are three different ways I'm going to discuss. First of all, it's the map. It's that kind of that simple idea of what you're presenting, nice one simple page document. Then there's the idea of the atlas where you're going to show multiple pages multiple things at once, and of course, topographical depiction, which is the extremely technical, we're going to give you absolutely everything, more than you possibly wanted. So the map is probably going to be geared towards your elected officials and your upper management. Now, these are the people who are going to be heading the departments, you know, and are going to have to know a little bit about just about everything that goes on within your department, <laughs> sorry, that goes on. So they probably don't have time to get down to the nitty gritty details of everything, but they need to be able to see something and quickly understand it. And that brings me to this point of Keep it simple, put it to the point, you know. When you're giving somebody, an elected official especially, a map, you know, they don't need a lot of details on there a lot of time. They need to know exactly what you're going to be showing them. They need to answer a simple question, and they need it as clear as it possibly can be. So that's kind of the point here is, you know, don't take them through and give them a lot of unnecessary information. You know, when you're giving them a document, they say, I need to see schools. You know, give them schools. Give them a little bit of basic information with that, but don't overload them by putting a lot of excessive information on there that they're not going to need or that may confuse them or somebody else when they're trying to make that point. You know, one of the worst things that can happen is you know, questions start getting asked and you're just simply showing a, a very simple basic map and now all of a sudden you're bogged down on that trying to explain what that map was. You know, the idea with the atlas is kind of to, to be able to promote it out to your citizens, your students, you know, your public users, people that are actually going to be consuming that service. You know, for the most part, they're going to need something in their hands they can look at, understand where they are, what they need to take away from that, and be able to do some basic analysis on it. It's almost kind of like you're going to be telling a detailed story about something. You're going to be walking them through piece by piece so they can understand the entire uh, piece, you know, a project as a whole or a location as a whole, like an entire county or something like that. So that they don't have to try to break it down into, you know, one large map to understand it all. They can get that additional information. Like I was saying, the big point with, uh, with this group is to remember, you know, they're using it for information and navigation. You know, they're the type of people they need to know, be able to look at and understand where they are and what's going on around it. They're not, they may not be uh, the people who are intuitively used to staring at maps all day. You know, so they need to be able to get that type of information away from it. And then you get to the last group, which is your topographical depiction. These are your extremely technical people. These are people that you, know, you can't give them enough information. You know, when you give them something, they, they're constantly asking the question, well, what's this? Why is that? Where is this location? You know, these are the folks who are a lot of, like a lot of us that sit in this room. You know, when we get a map, we start tearing it down to every single detail. We're the type of people who will catch something and we'll go, well, wait a minute, that street right there, that's actually, you know, 51st Avenue, not 51st Street. You have a mistake. You know, those are types of things. So if you're presenting maps and you're going to be making a maps for these types of people, you know, keep that in mind that, you know, the more details you can put on there, the better off it's going to be. Because generally, when the elected officials come to us and ask us questions, we need to be able to dive into that deepest level and understand exactly what we're looking at. You know, we want to get under the hood of models. You know, we don't want to just see the output. We want to know exactly what made it, what made it work, why did you use this parameter instead of that parameter. You know, th those are the types of questions that this level of detail has to happen. So to keep that in mind when you're talking to extremely technical people. They want those details in there. You know, and a big thing, especially you know, we're talking about Ignite presentations today, keep it fun and informative. You know, just because you're talking about highly technical things like a model, it, don't think that you have to sit down and get bogged down with going through the model step by step. You know, make it fun. You know, keep it, uh, keep it lively. Find a way to engage the audience and keep them kind of going with it. So hopefully you take away from it, you know, just the couple different approaches. And next time you're making a map and you're thinking about your presentation, you know exactly who your target audience is and you can make it a little bit better. Thank you.